All right, so we're working on this LCI wagon. We just got the AC working, so it's a good time to go over both the AC configuration and the CAN box configuration. A few people have been asking me about this. So quickly, I will show you under the hood of here. I've already gone over. This car came out really good. I'm pretty happy about this. So this still needs some cleaning up, but when you get my CAN box, it's gonna look like this. You have a harness here that you will plug into your holly here and your tuning cable or your monitor here. And then the red blue twisted pair gets connected to the red blue twisted pair off the DME connector. So that takes care of all the wiring, power, everything you need for there. Next thing you're gonna do, you're gonna come into your Holly software. Um, I'm gonna post pictures of this since it's kind of difficult to see, but you're gonna come up here to IO, go to inputs, gonna configure three inputs, AC, front wheel speed, rear wheel speed. They're all gonna be CAN inputs. You're gonna enable each one of them. And then under the configuration, I'll just go through the AC real quick. What you're gonna do, if you're using V2, it'll look like this. If you're using V1, everything will be on one page. So go to the CAN settings. You're going to configure this as EGT eight channel. For AC, you're gonna use CAN serial 608 and CAN channel A. Then on the sensor settings, you're gonna configure this to raw, zero minimum, 255 maximum. So what this is gonna do, and I can show you here in another clip. Here, let's do a live so you know how to do it. Turn this thing on, USB link. I've already got these settings in there. Okay, so I don't have my AC configured in here. So if you don't know how to do that, you can go down here to one of these. You can hit edit. This one here under sensors. I'll scroll over to find mine that says AC button status right there. So I need to make a spot. So drag something out of the way. Drag AC button status over to here. Okay. Yes. So now under sensors at the bottom, you see we have AC button status. As you can see right here, my AC button is on. When it's on, your AC button status is 256. Go ahead and turn this off. Now, this goes to zero. So maybe you can see that in one shot here. The laptop's right in the car. Can't see both, but here's my finger. Press that. You see the one down there at the bottom? Goes to 255. On the latest CAN boxes, this works with either the AC button on the right or the max AC over here. As soon as you hit that, you get 256 right there. Turn that off. So what this allows you to do, I'm gonna shut the car off so it doesn't beep. What this allows you to do is configure your AC to trigger from the holly. So what I do, come in here to an IO output. Okay, I have a output named AC compressor. It's a ground output. I'm gonna configure that. Now, what I have set up here, sensor input triggers. AC button status is above five. Coolant temperature sensor is below 230 and TPS is below 85%. So this output will come on when I hit the AC button, when the coolant temperature is below 230 and when I don't have my foot to the floor because you want to turn the AC off when you're going wide open. The other thing you want to set up in here under time Go ahead and set up like a four or a five second activation delay. And the reason for that is the other thing we're gonna do under an advanced table here is do idle up. So what we're gonna do is make a 1D table 
that's going to do a target idle speed offset with the axes of the drive-by-wire offset. Again, the same way on the AC button, just like that. The other thing I did on this car, which works out really well, is I set up an input for the AC pressure. To do this, I tapped into the uh, five volt sensor that's on the passenger side frame rail. And what you're gonna do is configure that sensor. This is the scaling right here that I figured out. So basically it's from 14 to 500 PSI from half a volt to four and a half volts. So now the other thing I can set up is on my compressor output, which I need to do, we'll add another one here that says we'll activate when AC pressure is below 300. So we kick it off at 300. And also we want to make sure that the AC pressure before we kick the compressor on is above 20 PSI. So we don't want to turn the compressor on if there's no pressure in the system. So you can set these values to however you want. Um, we'll go ahead and send this right now. Made a change, got to cycle the key, turn the key off, turn the key on. Um, I'll go ahead and fire this up, turn the air on so you can see. This car's not really tuned yet, so ignore the idle for now. Alright, so... There's this. On the bottom left, you can see the AC button status. You can also see the AC pressure sitting at 100, system neutral, nothing on. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the AC. What you're going to see is it's going to idle up. My fan's going to come on, uh, which I need to show you how to turn the fan on still. And then you'll see the AC pressure. So there's the idle up. My fan just kicked up. There's a compressor kick on. I see the AC pressure climbing. So everything works pretty well. Idles up on its own. AC is dropping down to 50 degrees, 60, 60 degrees already. So. And then turn the AC off. Idle goes down. AC button status goes to zero, pressure equalizes out again. So the other thing I need to show you is how to turn the fan on. So what you're gonna do there, in your normal BMW fan output here, BMW fan. So this is how we normally set it up, 400 RPM with a PWM setup. So the only thing different we do here is make the Y axis the AC button status. So you can see there on the left, starting at the bottom, it's zero. So that was where it would work when the AC is off as the car heats up to 180, it kicks on, and so on, goes up to 85. Or when you hit the AC button status, or hit the AC button, then it goes straight up to this top area here, um, and, they, and the fan kicks on full blast. So that way the fan's running uh, during that time delay I talked about earlier. That way when the compressor kicks on, uh, nothing overpressurizes. So there's kind of a long drawn out video of how to do the AC. Um, the other thing I want to go over real quick while we're here, it's already a long video, the inputs. Um, when you're configuring your front and rear wheel speed sensors, you're going to do them right here too. So let's just do front wheel speed. Um, I'm going to post a picture of how to do this because this is really hard to follow. Front wheel speed can. Um, you're going to configure it here just like the other one. We're going to go through, do the can settings, set up your can settings. 
um, set up your sensor settings from zero to 200 miles an hour on the front and rear. Um, I'll post pictures of that. And then when you do data logs, you'll have a uh, front and rear wheel speed. So you can do whatever you want with those. You can do boost by front wheel speed or drive or uh, traction control based on rear wheel spin, stuff like that. So long drawn out video, but AC setup and CAN box configuration.